In this episode, we are going to be looking at France versus Italy. And after the current recent events, I've got no idea what is going to happen in this game. Hello, amateurs, and welcome to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today, and he's in his car. Look. TT, how are you? She kicked me out. I'm on the road. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure that's not true. Right. Okay. Before we get into the actual selections themselves, um, what are you thinking about this fixture overall? Yeah. So we sp- we spoke off air yesterday. Base. I, I, oh, I fancy I fancy uh, Italy. To be honest with you, um, I think I think Italy would have been looking at their final two fixtures uh, as ones that they might win, particularly their last one against Wales, uh, which potentially could be a uh, wooden spoon. Um, but uh, now, with the form that they're in and the form that um, France are in, they've got to ha- they've got to have a crack, haven't they? You know, it's it's not in Paris. They've got to have a crack, and um, I kind of half fancy them. You know, interesting, interesting, and it gets more interesting when we get into the selections as well. So we shall get into that now. Here we go. Starting with the French forwards, I thought there might be some changes in the front row but they've actually made their changes through the back five of the scrum instead with Tuolagi coming on for his starting debut in the second row and Budha coming in at six with Cross moving to eight to cover the injured Gregory Aldrit. Apart from being absolutely enormous, what are you seeing in this French pack, Elka? (laughs) I I changed my mind. Italy are screwed. Twigalagi's playing uh, the the behemoth. (laughs) Um, this looks like a physical pack, doesn't it? They're, they're gonna, they're gonna go at them. Um, for me, it's all mindset, though, right? I mean, this team clearly is. I mean, they've got our favorite, your favorite hooker in there, who's, who's been firing not on all cylinders. But I suppose these guys have got a game in them, really. And if you know, if they can sort out whatever has sort of got them off track over the last few months, uh, whether I mean, there's lots of rumors coming out whether it's something going on with Galtier and Ibanez, and there's a fall out there. There was stuff around um, whether Sean Edwards has been sort of um, uh, sort of on the outskirts now for some reason. Whatever's going on, this pack here could you know if they if they hit their their stripes, then they could take anyone apart, right? Um, there, there's some there's some serious stuff. There's some good ball carrying in there as well. They'll be very competitive at breakdown by the look of that selection. Um, and of course, as you said, enormous so scrum time. The Italians will be will be will have to be on top of their game, but this looks like a, a fairly formidable pack. Yeah, on Vaca, I think he really shows up when France are going forward. He's that type of player, and f- with France not going forward that much during this championship, he hasn't had those moments where it seems like he's in every every single facet of play. Again, I agree with you. It's about mindset with these guys because they've got the tools, they've got the physical ability. It's whether they're switched on or not, and. I'm going to, you know, based on what we've seen this championship so far, I think there's a big question mark over that, whether they will be on Sunday afternoon. Okay, the backs are exactly the same as picked before. I'd suggested maybe Dante might get uh, given a rest because he hasn't been, he just hasn't looked himself. But I guess maybe what what they've decided to do is try and get him to play himself back into form. He's looked looked a little unfit to me. So maybe they're giving him every opportunity because he is quality, obviously. Oh, he's a fine player, um, but you know what you've just said. You could you could have been t- talking about any one of the French team. <laughs> they, <laughs> they just haven't been. They don't look fit. They don't. They look like they need to play themselves into being fit. Um, whether that's a physical thing or a psychological thing, I don't know. Um, you know, good that they've kept. Um, I guess consistency here. Um, but will they fire? Um, I mean, we know that, that that back three is just absolutely fantastic. And then you've got a a boot in Ramos that if the Italians are anyway, you know, ill disciplined, then uh, he'll take he'll take those opportunities and, and fire fire three points over every time. So a lot of pressure on Luku. Um, huge calls for him in the French press uh, to be gone. Um, but they've stuck with the 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 Bayon um, uh, nine and ten Jalibert there. So they've got to, you know they've got to put or shut up these guys and um, they 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 could they could rip Italy apart um you know quite quite easily if they get get some front football will they do it or or will this this weird missed World Cup hangover stay on there you know 
that's the big question and it's one of the reasons why this game i believe is actually really hard to call um into the forwards uh, sorry into the bench sorry the front row forwards uh, exactly the same as before i thought maybe they'd bring a big heavy second row into the starting lineup they did with Tuolangi, but Tafanu is on the bench as well. Rumar and my favourite named player for the French team, Abadi, such a great name for a back rower. And uh, Legarek and Moafana carrying on on the bench as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, Abadi should be a hooker, really, shouldn't he? <laughs> um, with a name like that. No, look, look, there's a lot of power on that, in that there. Um, God, that second row is an absolute beast for him to come on then, presumably for what... Actually, he's a good test for Twigalagi's, um uh, fitness really and see how he goes but um, you know we're both also a big fan of Marchand who's, who's you know an absolutely worldy hooker um, he, he's 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 probably one more one for the tight and, and that might be the way this game will be um, at stages in, in the second half um, when there's tired bodies but uh, yeah decent decent um, a decent uh, bunch of boys there to bring on if needed yeah absolutely okay let's move on to Italy and once more, it's hard to know what we're going to get from them. They've been inconsistent in terms of performance this championship. A brilliant first half against England, kind of faded away in that game and then really disappointed the next game against Ireland. And there's a couple of changes here, but not too many, really. Zalocki comes in at tight head uh, with Cecciarelli, I think it was, that was injured from the previous game. And then Favretto gets a start when I don't think he's been in the squad at all so far this championship. So. I looked on the uh, Italian website and Casada didn't really give any much information about that. It was just kind of sounded words like we're just trying to give people chances uh, in terms of Favretto. So it um, be interesting to see how he goes. And obviously, Ross Vincent, the Exeter number eight, comes in for, a, again, a starting debut for him. Well, um, this this selection might be be telling us that they're they're trying to blood a few players in this game and, and maybe looking at those last two games as I mentioned earlier. But you, you, you never know. Vincent's a, a good player and been playing well. Um, they've been uh, consistently inconsistent, the Italians, haven't they? And, and you would expect that to be fair. And with a new coach coming in, you know, getting used to the the, the, the different styles from what they had before in 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 a you know they're like someone from down under before who was a very straight talking um uh interesting character looking at the netflix show um over the last few weeks you know so a, a different a different more pragmatic um coach and it might be taking a bit of time for for the messaging to come through but you know it's a physical pack um looking forward to see them go at this um this rather large uh, french team but uh, they should be i mean line it hasn't been too bad um and and you know, I, I rate them as scrummagers, so I'm quite keen to see how they go as, as a set play. And I think once once Casada can get consistency there, then he can start to put his mark on on um, on you know with this back line um, that we'll look at in a sec. Yeah, the the thing I'm really looking forward to seeing because I don't know how this is going to go is that <clears throat> Vincent is a very very sort of pacey player, and I'm looking to see how he goes in what will be, I'm sure, some much tighter exchanges during this game against the French pack. So that's a big lookout for me about how he'll go there. Moving on to the backs and Italy have changed their scrum off for the third game in a row with Pajarello coming in to start. And the other big change is that Mori gets a start at 12 with Menoncello moving on to the wing in place of Pani. Now Mori's played on the wing before. So I'm interested that, that this is the way they've gone with that. It's, I mean, Mori is a physical, physical player. So maybe they're looking to be more direct this week, Italy. Yeah, well, they'll need to be. I guess again, again, it's a pragmatic approach from a from an X ten. Um, again, maybe they're looking to simplify and, and get him to take ball up or use him as a, um, you know, uh, a distraction and, and play in behind. Um, interesting though, and and where def tens tens as coaches, they always like to have a have a look at what their different nines can do and interesting they've done that three in, three in a row and uh, maybe, maybe he just wants to have a look and give give each player an opportunity um clearly there's not massive pressure on this coaching team um so so he, he can afford to do that and um, they're not expected to win anyway um but you know they've got they, they still got some pace in that back line um very interested to see how Manichello goes on the wing um 
I didn't think he had that much gas, but let, let's see. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know, he, he is fast and he'll he'll uh, cause some problems for the French um, back three on on Sunday. We will move on to the bench here for Italy and the big name that's come back into the side this week, Ferrari, the fifty cap tight head, uh, adding some pace to the game, no doubt towards the end. Um, <clears throat> and Varney, Varney moving to the bench. And as I thought, they, they really have to cover 10. So Marin is a is an out-and-out specialist 10 covered. But again, a 6-2 bench. So, you know, these teams are dicing with it a little bit in case they get injuries in, in the back division. They are. Maybe that's why they've, they've done those little changes in, in the back line that they can cover um, if something happens. Um, yeah, look, Ferrari by name, Ferrari by nature, fastest prop in, in uh, Six Nations history. So uh, let's see how he goes now. He's a bit big old lump, isn't he? Um, they've got, the, 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 again, those guys coming on to, to, uh, is, it will be interesting to see um, because obviously the, the, the scrum will be massive. Um, and and uh, Mirko um, is there. So let's, let's, let's see what happens. It's not a, you'd certainly fancy the French bench versus this. I think, um, and um, apart from number 20, um, who's, who's a worldie as well. <laughs> okay, that is, uh, those are the selections. Now, how do we see this game going overall? I think it's, it's so difficult to tell, and it's really, you know, it's a classic um, kind of European uh, game where we're just not sure what mental state the teams are going to be in. How motivated are they going to be? How much do France really want to go to Lille and hammer the Italians. Can, the, can Italy just go there, get into them from the start and mess everything up? And then obviously play a lot of good rugby themselves with some selection changes as well, which complicates things a little bit. I don't know. Like, I think it's really tough to call. Yeah, it, 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 we're, like, we're going back in time, aren't we, uh, around this French team where we don't know what's going to turn up. Um, and we, 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 we truly thought that that was gone with the, the coaching team that they brought in in, in Sean Edwards um, and trying to get that consistency um, of performance, whether that be home or away. Now, they're at home, but they're not. Um, they're on this road trip. Um, whether that's put them off or not, I don't understand it. It was... I know it's because of the, the, the Olympics are going to be in Paris, but I think there was also kind of touted that it would be a tour of France after they'd won the World Cup. So, you know, psychologically, it's a bit, <laughs> it's not great, is it? It's like, um, yeah, well, I was going to use an unsuitable analogy around um, stag do's and weddings, but I won't. But um, uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> they Italy got a massive chance, you know, if, if, if they're, if France are off it, then they've got a chance. And, and But the selection would, would kind of lead you to believe that maybe they don't see that as a game that they truly have targeted. Um, and maybe looking at other players, as we just spoke about, to give them a chance to give Casada the best possible selection um, for for the, the final two games of the um, of the Six Nations Championship. So, But it, it's... Uh, it, 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 I mean, the, the whole subplot is what is going on behind the scenes. And, and there's massive pressure, you know. If, if, if France lose, I could see Galtier getting sacked. Um, so there's huge pressure there. And uh, if the players know that, the players might not pitch up either because they want to change, which we've seen with um, one of the Irish provinces um, uh, this, this week, right? So um, massive pressure on Galtier um, and a... And no pressure on Italy. So let's see how the psychology plays up um, and, and what French team turn up. Yeah, absolutely. OK, then, mate, stick a number on it. Who's going to win by how much? I'm going Italy plus six. <laughs> plus six. I am also going to go for the romantic option. And i also going to back Italy to win. I think they're due a performance and I think they might get it this weekend. 24 25 that's going to be the score that I'm going for a oh. scoring game go on the Tafosi. <laughs> okay that's what we think people but what do you think at home have we got it right have you got any other clear kind of thoughts on this game that you think that it might happen any key players that we've missed out on let us know in the comments down below and we will join you there for a conversation give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind it helps other people find it Elko, thank you very much for checking in today. Much appreciated.
Thanks, CT. See you next week. And for those at home, you can subscribe, subscribe there, watch that one next, and don't forget, get out and play.